Greetings, Word Horde. We're here with an exciting option for you, a version of our podcast without any ads. That's right. No advertising interruptions, just the content you love, ready to go in your favorite podcast apps like Spotify and Apple Podcasts. It's another way to support the show, ensuring that we keep bringing you the word stories and language explorations that you love. Try it at waywardradio.org slash ad free. And it's affordable. For just a small subscription fee, you can enjoy a way with words uninterrupted, except by us. Plus, it makes a great gift. Know somebody who loves language as much as you do? Give them the gift of words. Easy to sign up, easy to enjoy. It's the same away with words, just streamlined for your listening pleasure. Go to waywardradio.org slash adfree. Support us, support the show, and enjoy an ad-free listening experience. waywardradio.org slash adfree. Thank you. Hey, podcast listener, Martha here with a special Away With Words minicast. Today, I want to tell you a story and make a request. The story is about a guy named Luigi. He was born in 1737 in Bologna, Italy. He studied medicine and philosophy at the university there, and he went on to work as a physician and a surgeon. When he wasn't practicing medicine, he was researching bird anatomy, the structure of their kidneys, their auditory canals, that sort of thing. Eventually, he became a professor there, and he and his colleagues spent a lot of time puzzling over the nervous system, specifically what was the connection between nerves and the muscles they seemed to help move. For centuries, people had guesses about how they worked. The ancient Greeks thought that nerves were hollow but filled with spirits, some kind of mysterious invisible substances that cause sensation and motion. The problem was nobody could verify any of this by experiment. So other ideas were proposed. Maybe nerves somehow dripped fluid onto muscles to stimulate them, for example. Then, in the early 1700s, some scientists began to suspect that maybe what filled and operated the nerves was electricity. At the time, there was a growing fascination with this strange phenomenon called electricity. Ben Franklin with the key in the kite, you see it right? That was in 1752. Back to Luigi, the scientist. A few years after Ben Franklin was experimenting with electricity, Luigi was researching its effect on nerves and muscles. He conducted experiments in his own home, mostly using dead frogs. He'd connect their nerves and muscles to electrical wires, and he even hung dead frogs on copper hooks outside his home during thunderstorms and connected them to a lightning rod with a wire. One day, Luigi noticed that when a dead frog's legs were touched by both a copper hook and a sheet of iron at the same time, the legs twitched as if they were alive. He went on to hypothesize that electricity must be inherent in the animal itself. Maybe, he thought, this animal electricity was produced in the brain and then distributed to the muscles via the nerves. In reality, what probably happened was that by touching two different metals to the frog and to each other in that way, he'd simply made a closed circuit. The frog's body didn't secrete electricity. It merely conducted it. In 1791, Luigi wrote an influential scientific paper in Latin all about this. The title translates as Commentary on the Effects of Electricity on Muscular Motion. Now, his guess was wrong, of course, but his paper still captured the public imagination. In fact, Luigi's experiments caught the attention of a 19-year-old Englishwoman who mused that maybe a dead body could be reanimated using electricity. As she would later put it, Luigi's experiments made her wonder if, quote, perhaps the component parts of a creature might be manufactured, brought together, and endued with vital warmth. That young woman, of course, was Mary Shelley, who in 1818 would go on to publish her novel Frankenstein. Despite his scientific mistake, Galvani did achieve a measure of linguistic immortality, for Luigi's last name was Galvani, Luigi Galvani, and today you'll find his name inside a word that means to jolt or jumpstart, as if with electricity. The word, of course, is galvanize. 
If you'd like to see a painting of Luigi and his frog legs and find out more information about him, including diagrams of his experiments, go to our website, waywardradio.org, which brings me to my request. As you can imagine, Grant and I love what we do. We can't wait to bring you more stories about language and conversation about the topics you're interested in. But we can't do it without your help. Please take a moment to go to waywardradio.org, click on the big yellow donate button, and do your part to help us keep producing more episodes. Your gift to our nonprofit will help jumpstart a whole new year of episodes. Make a difference today. Go to waywardradio.org and thanks.